is Sam Causey. My proper name is Wasim, but I use Sam for teaching purposes. Um, I've been teaching since 1998 here in London, Ontario. I've had my driving school for about approximately 20 years. We have uh, about 10 driving instructors, plus an office administrator that works full time to answer calls and answer inquiries um, and emails, etc. So she's full time. Um, we have both males and females on the on the on the team. Um, we're well established in the city of London. Our, uh, our reputation is very established with the road test center and the examiners there. We actually teach a lot of the road, ex road test examiners kids, and I've actually taught the examiners themselves. And I can proudly say that we've won best of London, uh, pretty cl close to ten years in a row. Reader's choice, consumer's choice. So we're very passionate about what we do at the school. Um, like I always say, you know, we teach driving skills for today's driving environment um, and try to pe make people more attentive to details and work on anticipation, right, to collision avoidance, um, fuel efficiency in terms of driving. So we combine it all together when we, when we teach. Um, everything is defensive driving based. Um, the Smith system, aim high, get the big picture, keep your eyes moving, make sure they see you, leave yourself an out. And the more critical part, um, scan, identify, predict, decide, execute. So we try to instill these into our students that physically teaching the kids how to drive is really honestly pretty easy for, for, uh, for what we do and my instructors, but teaching them how to think, how to anticipate, how to avoid collisions um, is really critical and adjust hopefully their attitudes towards driving that it's, it really is a life skill. It's not about one or two days, it's about a lifetime, 50, 60, 70 years potentially. Uh, I have Mandeep with me this morning. I'm going to be giving him a driving lesson, leaving from our facilities at the city plaza here. And so uh, I'll be communicating to him um, specifically as to what actions and, and sequences of, of, of actions that I want him to take, where to look. Um, it'll be in depth um, in terms of driving along, pointing out, anticipating, point, pointing out potential risk, uh, anticipating what people might do as well, and uh, all aspects of safe driving. So um, I'll be commenting on pretty much on everything but that can potentially be a risk for us as drivers in the direction that we're going from ahead and from behind and from the sides as well too. So Mandeep, when you're ready, um, if you've adjusted your rear view mirror and your side mirror, so yeah, use two hands, frame the back window and then put your hands back on the wheel and then check the rear view. For some reason, if you don't check the rear view with your hands on the wheel, it's a different impression when your hands are dropped. So you want to see the whole back window with your side mirrors, Mandeep, controls are on the armrest. You want to see very little of the car, um, next to nothing. Um, for newer drivers, we suggest a little bit, but there's no benefit in looking at the side of your car. So we want the mirrors pushed out, as we say, winged out. With the addition of the convex mirrors, or what people call the blind spot mirrors, if you set your rear view mirror up properly and your side mirrors, you can pretty much eliminate the blind spot. Okay. Um, regardless of this fact, we'll still expect that you will shoulder check, bring your chin to your shoulder to look back, because that is what the expectation is on the road test as well. Um, so you can, your seat is okay, your steering, mirrors, head restraint, we're going to bring your head restraint up just so it centers the back of your head because uh, it's ideally that way to prevent whiplash which is the most common injury associated with crashes. Seat steering, mirrors, head restraint and ventilation so we can set that up now as well and I'll do that. And then there's three security seat belts, low on your hips, snug across your chest, door locks, we suggest locking your doors. Um, more so to the ladies, to be quite honest, to the men, I don't worry about the guys so much. Uh, seat belts, door locks, and loose objects, so we don't have anything loose that's heavy that could fly forwards, potentially. Mm -hmm. So if you're ready, we're going to proceed forward. So if you can put your foot on the brake, put your car into reverse, um, and we're going to back out to the to the right, I'm uh, sorry, to, to the left, Mandeep, so if you can put your left signal on. we I'll make you signal everywhere because it makes you more visible. Also, what I teach a lot of, most all our kids to do is before you move, look back over your left shoulder, check the rear view mirror, glance to the right side. And a lot of times I will literally tap that horn because the horn wakes everybody up and makes them aware of your presence. So when you're ready, you're gonna ease off the brake only a little bit, don't lose contact and start to turn that wheel to the left as you look back left as well. Okay. Um so parking you know brake is there too as well, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. Disengage your parking brake is by your left foot, push on and push off. 
So use your left foot, there it is. And remember, don't use the gas in reverse unless it's absolutely necessary, Mandy. Oh, okay. Start turning that wheel to your left, and you turn it all the way to the left, Mandy. Look mostly to your left, because that's where the car is going. Glance to the right side and use your right side round mirror to help with that observation. Before you stop, Mandy, turn your wheels to the right quickly. Straighten your wheels and stop. It's always easier to straighten your wheels. Now put yourself into drive. Easier to straighten your wheels going reverse than forwards. You'll okay. fight the wheel. And you can go ahead, lift off that brake. Look ahead, chin up. As we, I like to say, raise your gaze, right? Yes. We don't want you to look low. We want, uh, we want you to aim high. Yes. And this way you'll get the big picture. That's it. Here, your steering method, it doesn't necessarily have to be hand over hand. Sometimes, hand over hand is the preferred method as we teach it. Certain occasions will cause for, you know, better to just to shuffle the wheel on certain occasions where the turning radius is not so much. Okay. And it cautiously, because it's a parking garage, I'm and going you're going to go to the right. Yeah, you've got to go to the right. Sorry, my bad. And you can signal here too. That's okay. it. Right signal here, and then we'll proceed. We can see the car is on, so we're aware of that because we see a little bit and of exhaust. Right here. Okay. That's yeah. it. And here comes the exit. So if you can put your right signal on, and let's check to the right side blind spot, and come up here, and then we're going to go left to get out. Oh, uh, oh, we can't go right. I'm sorry. We're still going to go further yes. to go the other way. Go cautiously, vision, then decision. If you don't have vision, then you cannot make that decision. Okay. And we're going to stop here. That's it. And while you're waiting, check your rear view, my brother, just to see if who's approaching and there's a car approaching. Yes. So we like to be aware of our surroundings at all times. And we'll have to be patient because every driver individually has obviously a different skill set. Yes. That's it. Again, right signal. I mean, again, it's just more about awareness than anything else and developing good habits. If you use your signals all the time, right, right here as well, please. Signal it, check back. And then now we'll get to go left here, Mandeep. So you're going to signal left. It's a dead end to the right, but you're going to still glance for pedestrians and proceed to the left. Okay. There's a stop sign approaching, and it's a private property stop sign. So we're not saying don't stop, but you don't necessarily have to hold it for three seconds. Stop here, hold it, take a look to your left, and then proceed straight ahead to the exit where we will pay and we'll depart. Okay. That's awesome. Let's go left signal, Mandeep. Slow, cover the brakes. Watch the pedestrian. Use that mirror. So a lot of times I'll honk because we can't see to the right. Yes. And she thinks we're honking at her, but we are not. We're going to go to the lights. It's a close because of construction. You go ahead and proceed. Turn that wheel. That's that's good. Let's turn left at the traffic lights here. Okay. Left signals on, Mandy. When the white line disappears, you've come to a stop right oh. there. So if you stop soon after the line disappears, guaranteed your bumper's behind the line pretty much no matter what you're driving. In terms of right now, straight ahead, oncoming traffic isn't a big issue here because it's fairly uh, negligible, except for people coming out of the VIA station. Your primary concern is pedestrians approaching from the left side and also from behind you, so you'll check your blind spot as well too. Okay. And as while we wait, I we always pay attention to the pedestrian crossing signals because they give us information, Wendy, right? Yes. You see the lights change to a red light, red hand flashing or red hand solid. We mm -hmm. watch the lights go yellow, we watch them go red. We make sure the people are stopping so that before we get our green, we are already well informed as to um, they, them approaching and stopping. There go the lights yellow. So we take a look left and right, or as I like to say, do the Stevie Wonder, if you know what mm -hmm. I mean. Yes. There you go, Mandy. Go forwards, glance to the right, look into your turn. That's it, move and turn. That's it, balance your hands and breathe. Let that wheel slide out if you can. Accelerate, check your rear view, Mandy. Lane change to the right, shoulder check as well. That's it. Leave your signal on. We'll turn right at the lights, man. Okay. Shoulder check again. That's it, my brother. Again, we've got a red light approaching, so we're going to stop when the white light disappears, and we're going to assess our vision. Full stop, hold it. Give me a little bump. Let me feel that. One, two, three, four. Look to your left. No vision. Let's improve our position. Come forwards, not aggressively. Turn your wheels to the right as you come up. Okay. And once you have vision, hold your position, Mendy. Mm -hmm. Never go further forwards than you need to so that you've left room to accommodate pedestrian, cyclists, rollerbladers, etc. Now you look to your left, come up a little bit more. It's gone green, Mendy, so you can make your turn. Okay. Look into your turn. Yeah, that's it. Chin up, look far, raise your gaze. Like you said, um, Aiming high, you see further ahead, you see construction, you see lanes ending, um, you see debris on the road potentially. As we approach, we have a green light. We're looking for the more important information, the walking symbol. We know the lights are fresh. Yes. Look left, right, left, and continue. Glance at the car to the right side. Just a glance 
to say, hey, we're watching you, and to deter them from possibly doing something uh, foolish or ignorant. Yes. We've got an e-bike coming up. Check your rear view mirror for me, Mandeep. Let's make a lane change to the left. Signal left, shoulder check, that's it. And in terms of technique for lane changing, Mandeep, when you can see tires in the rear view mirror and pavement, when you can see tires and pavement in the rear view, it means you have enough room to lane change. Okay. Three car lengths, if you see tires and a lot of pavement, you got a lot of room. But remember, you got to confirm your blind spot, and in most cases, we want you to accelerate with your lane changes. Okay. We only lane change to avoid the e-bike because of his pace or her pace. Yes. And as we pass the, the bike on the straightaway, potentially we'll look at lane changing back because the right lane is considered the driving lane and the left yes. lane is considered the passing lane. Okay. So if you can come over, check your rear view, put that right signal on, shoulder check and accelerate a little bit as well. That's it, my brother, well done. And we'll, we'll proceed straight at the lights. They're green, we're looking for the symbol. It's kind of hard to pick out sometimes. Yes. Um, I'm still looking for it myself. There, it's a walking symbol. We're, we're fresh to go. Look, left, right, and we're gone. Okay, good. Again, looking up far ahead to where you're going to be, 12 to 15 seconds, so pretty much as far as you, you can see, targeting your path. So always remember, you drive where you look. And this goes for everybody across the board. You look at the curb too much, you go to the curb. This guy might, was going to maybe cut it, but he won't do it now because the guy lane changed, right? Yes. Always remember, if there's a space big enough to fill a car, people will try to fill it, okay. right? And people accelerating or approaching or almost look like tailgating, they may they make me lane changing. Here, these lights are pedestrian activated. If you see someone push that button, cover the brake because the lights may go yellow quickly. Okay. We say that bend it, yeah, brake before the curve, lift off that brake, let your momentum sure. carry you, your gas as you come out of the curve. So always brake before a curve. Let your momentum carry you around the corner. Your foot is over the brake in the beginning. Foot slides to the gas. Pedestrian activated lights again. No one's pushing buttons. We're good to go. Peekaboo the rear view. So the expression I was going to tell you is, it goes like this. And uh, these are just of my own creations. Gas won't save your ass, but the brake might give you a break. And then I usually I'll say Kit Kat because that's just Logan. <laughs> give me a break. Um, other ones we've come up with. You've heard it already. No vision, no decision. Yes. Um, I love to use analogies. I always say we want Tai Chi, not UFC. Mm -hmm. um, smooth, steady, gradual, fluid moving. Stop so you can see the tires and pavement again. So we've used that term two times, Mandy. We stop so we can see tires and pavement when it's a typically a car. The bigger the vehicle, the bigger the space I encourage. So if it's a, if it's a truck, you stay further back to try to retain your peripheral vision. Okay. If it's a bus, a London Transit bus, I leave the length of the bus in front. Why? So that if I choose to make a lane change around the bus, I have room within my lane to accelerate and come around. So you need a smaller window of opportunity. It has nothing to do with aggression, right? Yes. It has to do with technique. Yes. If you stop typically behind a bus, you have to pull out, then you get to accelerate. So you don't get, so you'll need a bigger window of opportunity. Makes sense, yeah. And also we encourage everybody nowadays because of distracted driving that when you brake, check your rear view. You want to see are the people paying attention behind you or, or are they doing what I call hashtag the crotch watch, you know, looking at their phones, mm -hmm. God forbid. Yeah, let them move off, count one, two, three, create separation, right? Yes. And as you approach, look left, right, left quickly. You're looking for one in a million person running through a red light or stop sign. In the winter, they could be skidding out of it out of, because of the snow conditions. The road markings here are hard to see here in London because the quality of the paint is honestly garbage. Um, look far ahead to the lights up ahead. This is the main intersection in London, Wellington and Commissioners, and probably the widest as well. So you've got three lanes going straight, a left turn lane and a right turn lane as well. We okay. can see the countdown timer is at 20 seconds plus, so we know we're good to go, uh, potentially. And as you approach, glance left and right if you can, if you're comfortable doing so. That's it, my brother. Speed-wise, you're pretty solid, too. We, we encourage our students to stick within five over, five under of the limit in preparation for the road test, right? 10 over to today's ministry standards uh, will probably get you failed on a road test. Okay. With rare exceptions. Now, we have the garbage truck, which uh, is restricting our vision, which is not a big deal, but we want to keep our distance back, and potentially we do want to go around it at some point. Yes. Because we don't like the lack of vision, because you just don't know when they're going to break, what's going to happen. Look left, right as you go, minor intersections, so you don't have to move your head as much. And you peekaboo the rear view once again. If you've already done it, forgive me.
speed's excellent. The right lane is turning into a, uh, is a turning lane for cars exiting. So watch these cars to have a right signal on or they're going to come over to our lane because their lane is ending. Because mm -hmm. the, the lane ends at these traffic lights. Yes. Yeah, like there, this car, there's yeah. an overhead sign indicating that. It's a walking symbol. We know the lights are fresh. That's it, my brother. Pace-wise, always keep it on covering your brake because if you see them slowing down, that's it. If we do a good job of maintaining distance, when people break, my, our first reaction typically is lift off the gas, okay. right? If we're doing it right. Stage two is you cover the brake and stage three is brake. But if we're following too closely, then you'll have to go to the brake right yes. away. And we're looking up ahead, eye lead time, targeting our, our intended path. And you're doing a great job. Way to go. Speed's great. Lane position's excellent. Here we can see a sign, black and yellow, which is a warning sign, warning us that we have a fire station not to block entrance or accessibility for the emergency services. The okay. road opens up again to more lanes. Mandeep will continue to stick to this lane because eventually it will narrow back to two lanes again. The right lane, again, because Wellington is a major commercial area, is basically an exit lane for all the businesses on Wellington Road. Once okay. again, as you slow, you check that rear view, my brother, and uh, give this to guy time, and we'll roll up. Never use the gas when you don't have to. Um, we really promote, uh, I love to promote avoiding unnecessary braking. It's what I encourage all my kids to do. Challenge yourself to be very efficient with braking, acceleration, etc. Um, if you do this, you're more fluid and you get better fuel economy as well. Okay. So a smart <clears throat> driver pushes the gas, not according to what he wants, because we all want to push, pushes according to what he needs. Yes. Based on his observation. That's okay. it. Let that car move off, create separation, look left, right, or as I like to do, do the Stevie Wonder, and keep on going. We have to remember, driving is not the Tour de France or F1 or IndyCar. We're not trying to catch the peloton, as they say in France. We want separation. Yes. Peek it with that rear view if you have it. If you have, forgive me. Speed's coming up beautifully. You're very good with your speed control. Bravo. We're approaching traffic lights. Again, the color of the light, you're going to notice no matter you want to or not. More importantly, it's a walking symbol. You know it's fresh to go. Yes. This truck is coming up a little bit aggressively on your left, Mandy. So what potentially runs through your head is that he might cut over, right? Yes. Watch how much distance he gives to the car in front of him. Okay. If he continues to get tighter, he may be coming over. But I will also tell you, London statistically is rated as a very poor driving city. Statistically rated one of the worst in the country. And I will vouch for that wholeheartedly. Being from Toronto originally myself and Scarborough, I personally would rather drive there than here. Never mind, now traffic has picked up because London has had a lot of growth in the last couple of years. Yes. yes. Lights are green, it's a walking symbol, look left, right, and we're gone. Straight ahead, rooftop of that car, look far. That's it. Bend it a little bit to the left. That's it, my brother. <clears throat> so we're in White Oaks, part of London, and literally in the road test area here in London as well, potentially. Wellington Road is, you will be on it if you were doing a road test here in London. Lights are green as we approach, it's a walking symbol, it's fresh, look left, right quickly, that's it, and then look up ahead far to where you're going to be in 10, 12, 15 seconds. Watch this truck, don't trust anybody. You hope for the best, but honestly expect the worst. Okay. That's it, my brother, we'll continue. Let's turn right up ahead, Mendy. Put your right signal on, check your rear view. We're gonna go off with this angle, shoulder check. That's it, bend it like Beckham, very good. And we'll go 50, we'll proceed to the to the stop sign up ahead, we'll turn right when it's safe. Okay. And this is a one-way street because I see a Yes, line. that's okay. correct, it's a one-way street. White lines divide traffic going in the same direction and all the signs are facing us. Very good observation, my son. Right signal's on, then check that rear view mirror, signal mirror, white line disappears, you stop. As you come up with right turns, always turn your wheel a little bit, but not much. Stop okay. dead. Give me a bump. Let them feel it. Yes. Assess your vision. Improve your position. So come forward, lifting off the brake. Don't use the gas to come up because it's too aggressive, right? Yes. If we come up non-aggressively, we're much better, more likely to make a defensive decision, right? Yes. We come forward with our foot on the gas, we're much more potentially like to, to make a, maybe an impulsive decision. And if you're comfortable, that's it. Shoulder checked again. That's excellent. 
first available lane always. And then you see it's green, it's parking. You look up ahead and then you accelerate, my brother. Okay. That's it. And I see a speed limit sign. Speed 60 limit maximum. sign is 60. Again, if you don't see these signs in the city, you assume 50 until you see a sign that tells you otherwise. Yes. But also look at the environment in which you are occupying. If it's all housing and all residential, you're better off to assume that it's a 50 or if not slower because many municipalities have reduced speeds to 40s in parts of their metropolitan area as, a, as, as they refer to as traffic calming measures and school zones have definitely gone to 40s as well too. Yes. 60 it is and we'll proceed straight looking far to the lights up ahead. This is Exeter Road so you can see up ahead 70 begins at the sign there. Yes. So as you get in close proximity to that sign then you'll start to pick your pace up to 70. Peekaboo that rear view again if you have it. Again, if you have, forgive me for, for, for because I'm not gonna stare at you, I'll remind you. So now it's 70, you pick it up gradually. Red hand and a clock ticking, we've got enough time. Look left, right, Stevie Wonder, and you're gone. Okay, good. That's it, my brother. Check that rear view again, my brother, just so you're aware. We like you to be aware of who's around you at all times. Because if you're aware of who's around you all the time, the blind spots, they're still relevant, but not as critical because you've been attentive to the details. Rear view mirror, you should try to check it every five to eight seconds in that range. Um, and when you do it for road test purposes, you nod your head up a little bit, exaggerate, right? Yes. You can't see your eyes moving, they want to see your head move. Mm -hmm. Same thing when you look at an intersection and scan it left, right, move that head because they cannot see your eyes moving. Okay. That's why we'd say, you know, on the day of the test, if you wear a baseball cap, if your hair was long enough, you could put in a ponytail for the girls mm -hmm. to see it, to exaggerate the head movement. And even some of the boys have got long hair again too now. <laughs> it's kind of coming back in style. Yes. 70, your pace is 70, perfect. Okay. Space is good. Um, why don't we turn right at the lights up ahead, Mandeep? So we're not gonna signal yet. We always try to minimize confusion. Okay. Signal two to three seconds in advance, minimize confusion. Now you put that right signal on, and then we check the rear view mirror to see who's coming up. We see the pedestrian approaching the corner we're gonna be turning at, but we think we'll be pretty good because he's got there's a bit of a distance. Yes. It's a green light walking symbol. It's not gonna go yellow. Look to your left as well. Make your turn. Look into your turn, that's it. It's okay. a single lane. Let that wheel slide out if you can, and then accelerate out of the turn. Okay. That's it, my brother. Good. Chin up. Look far. Raise your gaze, as I like to say. And we're going to go straight. We're now heading north on White Oaks Road, or White Oak Road. Okay. And there's a bicycle lane on the right? Yeah, bicycle lane there. And again, um, you'll see, not just in London, but throughout municipalities across the province, there's a general push to more bicycle lanes in all parts of cities to encourage that aspect. Look, let's be very real. London, Ontario is not a cycling city and it never will be. But it should be there for the people that do cycle because they, they're passionate about what they do and we have to respect the space that they need. Yes. All right, if there's a no bicycle lane, you must give a bicyclist one meter, three feet by law. Um, and never pass a cyclist tight, of course. Yes. Yeah, we're slowing down. Check your rear view as you slow to see if the person behind you is attentive. Tires and pavement is what you want to see. Here, because it's a van, you can go a little bit more pavement, potentially, but um, we always try to look through their windows as well, too, right? Here, we can kind of see, but not very much. It's not going to yes. be that beneficial. Mm -hmm. Glance to the right side, because there's really only road that's in existence. There's nothing to the left. And we'll continue to proceed straight ahead. the sign for the bicycle lane center lane for shared shared left turn lane in many cases and your speed is excellent okay. again if you were to get five over the limit you just lift off that gas right don't make it obvious uh, like i said 10 over um you know if it's a road test you're potentially going to fail it um again then there's also the, so the concern of tickets speeding tickets etc which can directly affect your insurance rates yes up ahead, why don't we turn left at the lights up ahead, Mandy? Okay. This uh, left turn lane is approaching now. You can put that left signal on now. Yeah, left signal, mirror check, left shoulder check as you enter the lane. Look up ahead, Mandy. 
Notice that the red car, leave your signal on. The red car is turning into the Tim Hortons. And if that's fine, we'll get a chance to slide up. Look at your lights. Notice that there's an advanced green, right? We've got red, yellow, green. Yes. Look at your position in the left left turn lineup. So whenever you turn left, uh, you want to, it's here, there's no island barrier, so you're going to say centered or a little bit left centered. Tires and pavement right there. This is a, an extensively long advanced green, so we should not have a problem making the turn. But it's important that you get to know the city that you live and how long the advances are, where, where you live and in your neighborhoods. If the arrow goes yellow and deep in the middle of your turn, you're going to complete that turn. Okay. The arrow goes yellow before you start to initiate that turn, wait in the intersection with your wheels straight. Okay. So the arrow's there, we come forward, glance to the right side, and look, look into the lane. Yeah, target your path. That's it, my brother. And then once you let that wheel slide, accelerate, peekaboo the rear view, put that right signal on, man deep, shoulder check, confirm the blind, and you come on over. Well done. Okay, thank you. Look far ahead. Again, we're going to turn right at the lights approaching up ahead, my brother. Look for a good time to signal, and we're gonna probably put the signal on now. Shoulder check, slide in. You can see the bicycle lane painted green here. Now the lights are going to yellow. You can slow your pace. You have to do a stop at the white line. Turn your nose to the right a little bit and stop dead. Give me, oh now you got a right turn oh, arrow, yeah. man. You look oh. to your left and you go. They're doing more and more of that. What I, yes, yeah, slide into the first available lane. Excellent. Lift off the gas just to accommodate that guy pulling out, right? Yes. As opposed to braking. Mandeep, check your rear view mirror for me. I'd like you to lane change to the left, Mandeep. Signal it, shoulder check it, look back. Yeah, come on over, accelerate a little bit. Cancel the signal when you're in the lane. Look left and right, Stevie Wonder, as you go. Never worry about a signal. Control, directional control is always more important, right? Because sometimes newer drivers will worry too much about signals, right? Yes. And I've noticed that, I, I call it signalitis. Their turn will be coming up. Right, and they'll have their hand ready on the on the signal. I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like getting ready to signal. I'm like, but it's right by your hand, right? Yes. Yeah. Peek up in the rear view. This guy speeding up. Well, don't be surprised if that truck cuts into your lane, man. Deep, right? Okay. And look at that. There you go. How did I know that? Because of his approach speed, right? Yes. So to me, that was an easy giveaway. This is what we call anticipation. Okay. Um, like I always like to say, we want to anticipate, cooperate, accommodate, appreciate. Look as you go, left, right, Stevie Wonder, and you're gone, my brother. Andy, let's turn left with the lights up ahead, please. Put that in the left signal on, check your rear view, cover your brake, it's right up ahead, shoulder check, Mandy, but bring it in, slow your pace. Once again, I want you to notice that there's two cars in front of you, continue to slow that pace, peekaboo that rear view for people that are inattentive potentially. Stop so you can see the tires and pavement. Now, okay. there's at least two to three cars in front of you, and you can see by the light setup, there's four that you're gonna get an arrow potentially. We don't assume. Yes. And our position, we're on the fence. Remember, a lot of this is dictated by the first car. If they take too long, for whatever reason, right? Non-attentive, slow reaction, they'll kill a lot of that light. Regardless, we don't run yellow arrows like we don't run yellow lights, right? If we can stop safely, we're going to do so. Yes. Now this one particularly, the island, Mandeep, where you're gonna turn left, is almost like an impediment. You'll see what I mean as we get up ahead, Mandeep. Go forwards, watch your green arrow, my brother. Keep on coming out, glance to the right, Mandeep. Go further forwards, now turn it. You see, because the island is a barrier, you see? Yes. They, if they, if they would have done it right, in my estimation, they would have sliced part of that island off. So you have easy accessibility to the lane. Good job, my brother. Shoulder check it, very well done. As we say in Russian, хорошо, очень хорошо. See what happens when you teach long enough, you learn to you know to do some other languages. Yeah. <laughs> so at this point I can I can do this in Spanish, I can do it in French, and I can do it even in a little bit of Mandarin Cantonese. I can't speak any of them, but I can say right, left, slow, stop, red, yellow, green, things like that. Yeah, yeah, the basic basic exactly. stuff. Yes. And you know, people really appreciate that. Yes. Because you're trying to accommodate. Lights are green, my brother. Well, I think it's a walking symbol. We're fresh to go, like Metro. Look, glance as you go. That's it. Peekaboo that rear view mirror, and we'll continue to proceed straight for a little while. Speed's excellent. Way to go. Now, you see the lights are red up ahead, Mandeep, so I encourage you, don't use the gas anymore. Cover your brake. Once you realize you have enough momentum to get to the light, it's pointless to waste your fuel. Check your rear view. Uh, 
That's it, my brother. Let the car move off in front of you. Look as you approach left, right, left. Stevie Wonder, as I like to say it. And your acceleration is beautiful. I love how you're accelerating. It's very fluid. It's nice and gentle and incremental. Thank you. Bravo. Peekaboo that rear view again. Or side mirror if you want to. Look far ahead as best you can with the visibility that you have. That's it, my brother. Lights are approaching once again. They're minor lights, right? Meaning it's a minor residential street, so they won't change yellow as frequently, right? So okay. you look for that information, right? Yes. We got, I can't, sorry, my eyes are bad. It's a walking symbol. We're walking good sign. to go. Yes. Oh, Bravo. And you do a short glance to the right side because there's not much to the left besides the church. Okay. That's it. We're going to go, we're approaching Wonderland Road, Mandy. Uh, at the traffic lights up ahead. So there we will proceed to turn right. Wonderland is one of those streets that's become excessively busy as London has developed and it's chronically pretty backed up. So now you've got a Commissioner's Road food basics here. Don't put your signal on just yet. Just delay a little bit. Now put your right signal on. Shoulder check in, Mindy. Slide over and yeah, I'm gonna come on over here. That's it. Cancel that briefly. Now, and then once you get up here, put it back on here, yeah. Bicycle lane is there, and you can see they've done a nice job with the paint there, green. Um, now look at the lights, Bandeep, you can see the advance. Now I wanted to point out you were gonna get a green, and you did, of course. Okay. Check your blind spot again if you can. That's it, slow, look left and go. Off the brakes and turn it. That's it, foot over the gas, push the gas, and you come out of your turn. Let that wheel slide out. That's delicious. Sorry, I don't use typical words. That's it, lift off a little bit on the gas. You don't have to brake, this way we avoid the braking with these people. Remember, Londoners love to pull out in front of you and force you to break, right? Mm -hmm. They love to lift, the pull out in front of you and force you to lift off the gas, which is not ideal, right? Yes. If this were road test standards, if you pull out and force someone to break, your test is over. You force them to lift off the, off the pedal and the examiner notices, it's over as well too. Lights are yellow, brake firm a little bit now, then check your rear view and then soften it up. And again, tires and pavement, my brother, is what you ideally want to see. A little bit of the road. When you stop so you can see the tires and the pavement, Mandeep, you'll have about a car length in front for three reasons. One, if, God forbid, somebody hits you, you don't hit the car in front of you. Yes. Two, if they're driving a the standard manual, they could roll backwards and you left room to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. And if they break down, you have enough room to get around comfortably. When you look as you go left and right, see me wonder, when you can see the tires and pavement of the vehicle in front of you, one revolution of the wheel will get you out. Now, why do I emphasize that? Because I don't want you to steer more than you need to. We're efficient with the steering. There's less effort to bring it back to straight. Yes. So everything is about efficiency in terms of how we teach it. No, We don't accelerate more. We don't brake more than we need to. We don't turn more than we need to. Foot's over the brake because we're downhill. We're picking up momentum and it's a red light. You're doing a great job. Way to go, man. That's it, my brother. Check your rear view as you approach if you're comfortable doing so. Tires and pavement once again. That's it. Look as you go left and right. Accelerate. Look far. Rooftop of the car. The truck. That's it, my brother. Notice again, this guy's accelerating a little bit strong in the gray Ford Escape. Yes. So your thoughts are potentially he may come over and he has once again, right? Yes. Anticipation of the nation. Um, these signs people give away... Remember, some signs people give away are direct, right? And other signs are indirect by their by the way they're moving. Here, you got this F-150, Mandeep, so be mindful. I, watch him. Either you're going to back off a little bit, Mandeep, or you're going to accelerate. I think you're doing the right thing. Non-aggressive. Now you push it a little bit, Mandeep. That's it. Watch one of these guys here as well, right? Okay. Good. Look for your information, my brother. There's a red hand flashing, right? You see yes. that? Cover the brake, Mandy. Look for the clock. What's the clock? I can't read the number. I think uh, you're good 17. to go. Yes. Bring your wheel back to the right a little bit, my brother. That's it. Well done. Look ahead. Across, look across the curve. Hands are very incremental. Millimeter movement. Hold it and see, right? Yes. You want to steering is your input device, your movement is your output. So you want to see what you're getting all the time. Okay. Soft curve, very little movement of the wheel. That's it. Peekaboo that rear view once again. And we'll continue to proceed ahead. Look at those lights, look for the walking symbol or the red hand or the countdown. That's, that's valuable information. This is a minor light, but still we look. It's hard 
to see that. I can't read that at all. Yeah, it doesn't it look, look like it's working. Yeah. yeah, it's a cover that brake as you approach. Check your rear view to see who's behind you and we'll proceed straight ahead. That's it, my brother. Again, we see the flashing hand. <coughs> yeah, flashing uh, red hand. Looking for the countdown number. I see, I can't see because the car's in the way. Look left and right. That's it. And gas. That's it. Remember always never lane change in or near an intersection. Right? Okay. And do this the, the observation as you're approaching. Yes. And keep in mind that most collisions in many instances happen in or near intersections. Look left, right as you go, and again it's minor, so you don't need a lot of head movement there. Mandy, but I'd like you to make a lane change to the left, my brother. Put your okay. left signal down, check your blind spot, turn your head, and that's it, and just slide over. Very nicely done. That's it, my brother, good. Mandy, but I'd like you to turn left of the lights up ahead. Um, I think it's Beaverbrook is the name of the street. Okay. Left signal on now, my brother. So it's always signal, mirror, look over your shoulder, and then you go. We call it SMOG, S-M-O-G for an acronym. Signal mirror, over your shoulder, go. Now here, stay tight left within your comfort zone, Mandy. Take advantage of that round mirror. Always remember, my brother, there's no benefit being wide in a turning lane. Mm -hmm. Here you have the island. Uh, I will always encourage all of my people to stay tight within their comfort zone. Um, why? You have a better chance to see. Staying tight left will not guarantee you vision, but it certainly improves the odds. Yes. If everybody would practice this simple thing, it would make it easier for all of us. Now, if there was no island bed deep, you would be left centered in your lane, but you would not be tight left because you, no, you don't have any physical protection. There's yes. the arrow bed deep. You go ahead. Proceed at a balanced speed. Green arrow still there. That's okay. it. Make your turn. Look, and you're gone. That's it, my brother. Well done. Look up ahead. Notice the London Transit buses lift off the gas, cover the brake, my brother. Because the truck is pulling out, peek it with the rear view. That's it, slower. And yeah, that's perfect. Lift off that brake, Mandy. Back to that gas, look to the right. They're striking, I didn't know that. Anyways, signal left, my brother. Hold it here, stop. We're gonna wait and see. Check your rear view. We'll let this car pass first, Mandy. I don't like to pass buses in general, Mandy. Mm -hmm. But here, when you go around, use a little bit of gas, my brother. No. Swing it out, push with authority a little bit. That's it. Leave your signal on. That's it. That's it, my brother. That's just to keep people honest, you know? It keeps them guessing kind of straight ahead. Okay. It's an always stop approaching. Everybody should stop and don't make any assumptions, right? Yes. You may stop first, you may not go first. If they go, you let them go, right? Okay. This is what defensive driving is all about. Doing everything you can. White line disappears, you stop dead. Hold it, give you the bump. Look left, right, left, mid-deep, and you're gone. Your, your turn is up. That's oh. it. Yeah, de definition of de defensive driving, doing everything you can to prevent a collision, despite the actions of other people, the circumstances around you, right? Yes. It ties into being a responsible driver, predictable, good man. You slow for the bump, lift off the bump, lift off the brake. That's it, my brother. So I was saying there's going to be more bumps up ahead. You know, slow with bumps, slow and go. Okay. Better to be on the slow side than too fast, and you try to hit them in the most, the least intrusive way possible. Yes. So yeah, that's perfect, but now you lift off that brake. Let your momentum carry you back to the gas. So I was saying responsible driver is predictable, courteous, and artful. Predictable, do what people expect, drive according to the conditions. Courtesy, do unto others as you would expect them to do unto you. And artful, smooth, steady, gradual, fluid. Mm -hmm. Here, slow it down, check your rear view, my brother. That's it. You're doing a great job with the control of the bumps. We have a roundabout approaching. People in the roundabout, let's go right in the roundabout. People in the roundabout have right away over you approaching. Slow, look, vision, decision. Right signal on, Mindy. That's it, we'll go right here. Bravo. Look up the hill. That's it, my brother. We'll proceed straight ahead. Okay. Good. Residential, so we'll go on the base that it's 50 until we see a sign that tells us otherwise. Neighborhoods, you always look at the time of day that you're there. Right? School is in session, so you know we all we know most of the kids are at school. Yes. Right? It's 3 30, 4 o'clock. We're more aware that buses will be arriving in residential neighborhoods at 2.20, 2 o'clock in London, 2.30. High school buses will be arriving in residential neighborhoods. Peekaboo your rear view. Look as you go left, right, Stevie Wonder, and we're gone. In the car, somebody's in that car, go around them and think about the door opening. So whenever we see a parked car, I'll say two words to you. I'll say feet and seat. Meaning? 
Look underneath the car for feet, people walking out, check the driver's seat, look for any indication of activity. Okay. Exhaust, you know, brake light on, the foot first, the foot is on the brake. Anything that lets you that the you know, door might open, they may pull out. Yes. <laughs> Let's turn left, my brother. Left signal down. There's no line, stop behind the sidewalk, Mandy. Okay. Stop, hold it, assess your vision. Vision to the right is restricted because of the bush, left because of the fence. Roll forward, foot stays over that brake. Don't go to that gas. Once you've got vision, then process your decision. Now you're gone. That's it. Again, we don't encourage you to come forward with your foot over the gas. You're more likely to be impulsive. And you, if it's a road test, you push too forward too strong and give the examiner the wrong impression. He thinks you're going. Your test is over. Yes. Roundabout approaching again. Right signal on. Uh, people in the roundabout have right away. We're going to go straight ahead. Glance to your left. That's it. And follow it through. Look up ahead across the curve. That's it. Right signal here if you're comfortable. Peekaboo that rear view mirror. See who's approaching. Let's turn right at the roundabout up ahead, my brother. So now you can put that right signal on and then cover that brake because you can't see that far to your left. Yes. And that's why we do it this way. Bend it like Beckham. If it's good, double check. That's it, my brother. Follow the red pickup truck. Well done. Forward taxi, still in the car. We see the signal lights on. And we're downhill, so you won't use the gas much because you'll pick up speed without trying, Bendy. Yes. Look far, chin up. That's it. Peekaboo that rear view mirror as well, too. Mandy, up ahead, we're approaching Wonderland Road. We're going to proceed left at the lights up ahead, Mandy. Okay. Left signal's on, shoulder check it, over your shoulder, bring it in. And that's it. Watch, look at the red car, left signal on. A lot can be done with glances, right? I believe, you know? And it's not about making a face or an angry face, but letting people know that you're aware of their presence, right? Yes. Like I said, you know, we talk about driving strategically, which is looking effectively, maintaining space, communication, right? Look effectively um, means looking far and wide, right? Blind spots, eye lead time. Communication is with your signals, right? Two to three seconds. Use the horn, but use it properly. Don't do it excessively. <laughs> um, but also, like they say, you know, I always say life and driving are very similar, right? Um, you know, in life you're going somewhere, driving you're going somewhere. Yes. In life there are bumps on the road, driving is the same. In life there are jerks in our lives we come across, and in driving, of course, is the same, right? Mm -hmm. And in both cases you have to plan. Yes. So, for left turns, for proper rules, one car only at a time, you should not enter the intersection unless you have reasonable expectation. Okay. He's turning, you can proceed forwards, glance to the right. If you're comfortable, Mindy, go ahead. Look into your lane. That's it, always turn into the first available lane, the corresponding lane. Accelerate out of that turn, my brother. Check that rear view, right signal on, shoulder check. Bravo. Um, let's turn right, my brother, please. Right signal's on, shoulder check it. Bring it in right away, as soon as it opens up, it's better that way. Signal stays on, the white line's solid, meaning you can't change your mind now. Okay. You are committed to the right turn. Yes. Even though road look left as you approach, lift off that brake and turn it, that's it. Now this is Sarnia Road, Mandy. Bicycle lane is there, you can see it, it's a 50. Yes. Excuse me. Again, they're fresh, the walking symbol's there. We look, move our head a little bit, left, right. We always look left first, because that's where the most imminent danger is coming from the left. Yes. That's it, my brother. He's got signals, they'll have to wait their turn. We'll stay to this lane. Okay. You're coming downhill, so you're not gonna push too much, because you're gonna pick up pace. We're turning left at the second lights up ahead. Okay. <clears throat> He's braking for whatever reason, so we want to maintain our separation. Yes. Peekaboo that rear view, be aware of where are they, how fast are they approaching. He's turning, so you have to slow that pace right down. That's it, my brother, good. And then time it, beautiful, well done. Check that rear view. Sometimes people will try to take advantage, right, because you slow down and try yes. to lane change. Mm -hmm. And now you're gonna brake firm and then soften it as you approach. Once again, when that white line disappears from your sight, you have stopped very soon after. Stop there. This way, again, guaranteed, you're behind the line, and there's a little bit of room there for cushion. Let's turn left at these lights, my brother. Your lane has turned into a left turning lane. Left signal's on, and we're good. We're approaching the University of Western Ontario, or as it now is called Western. I don't know why they ever changed the name. It was kind of foolish, but... Look at your lights once again, my brother. You've got four... You've got an arrow, lift off that brake when you see it's time, and foot's over the gas, my brother, push. Then come out, look to the right side, keep on moving, still arrow good, you're good, turn it in. First available lane, 
That's it. And then look up ahead, my brother. Accelerate. Check your rear view. Right signal on, Bindi. Shoulder check. Beautiful. And it's 50 because of the school. Okay. That's it, my brother. Way to go. Straight ahead. Lights are green, but it's a walking symbol. You know the lights are fresh. Yes. We're going to go straight at the next lights as well, Bindi. So look at the lights are green. Walking symbol is present once again. You know they're fresh to go, Metro. Look left, right, and you're gone. That's it. 50, because again, it's a residential neighborhood close in proximity to the university. There's a street coming up on your left. I believe it's Amble side. And you'll see a left turn lane approaching up ahead, my brother. So okay. we're going to turn left and head into the residential neighborhood to do um, uphill, downhill parking demonstrations. Left signals on, my brother. Mirror check. Left shoulder check. Enter the lane immediately so no one's going to try to sneak in, which is fairly rare. And again, technique. Brake before the curve, mm -hmm. the turn. Ease off it, let your momentum carry you around the corner. That's it, my brother. Good, and then gas as you come out, let it slide out. You can see the sign for deer, which is surprising, but London's deer all over the place. Let's turn right on the street here that we're approaching, my brother. Right signal's on, well done. You checked your blind spot. Slow and go. That's it, my brother. Turn your head, look into your turn, look up ahead. Straight. Mandy, let's demonstrate parking on a hill, please. Signal right, my brother, shoulder check. Pull over by the curb, use the right side mirror to help you, the round mirror. We'll do uphill with a curb. Straighten your one back, that's it. Stop your car. Now, Mandeep, I'm gonna show you the proper, proper way to do it. Put the car to neutral, my brother. Check that rear view. Now, what we're gonna do in a second is you're gonna lift off the brake a little bit, but you're gonna turn the wheel quickly to the left. Uphill with a curb is to the left. It's the only one that goes to the left. Everything else is to the right. So when you're ready, let ease off that brake and turn left all the way. Just turn it all the way. No braking at all, because the car will stop on its own. Now push the brake with your foot. Now I want you to engage the parking brake first and then hard, and then put it in the park. Always remember, that's it, my brother. Always engage the parking brake first on a hill because it secures your transmission. You know, you feel that roly-poly thing happening. That's not necessarily good for your car. So a good driver knows. Now, when we leave here, what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to put it in drive first, Mandy. Okay. And then you disengage the brake afterwards because it's better for the car itself. So let's go ahead when you're ready. Put yourself in drive. Foot's on the brake. Sign uh, take your parking brake off, Mandy. Check your rear view mirror, signal left, shoulder check, lift off the brake mid deep, and straighten the wheels to the right first, then bring the gas in. Double check again, and push. That's it, my brother, good. Glance to the right, straight ahead, my brother, push. Wow.